you upload a video and it gets several thousands of views and you're thinking, oh my God, this is it. And then you get hit with that 10 by 10, which means your video is trash. In this podcast episode, I talk to a man I have a lot in common with. We're both in our 40s. Yeah, but he's at one end, you're at the other. We both train Brazilian jiu-jitsu and we're both trying to escape the rat race by making a living from the creator economy. My name is Javon Torres. I'm from Sacramento, California. I'll be 42 years old next month. And I've been an aspiring content creator since the early days of YouTube back in like 2007, making daily vlogs. And then I switched over to gaming content. And now I feel like at the age of 40, I'm finally getting clarity on some of the content creation tips, but also just more maturity in life. It's funny because I was kind of watching some of your videos prepping for this podcast and realize that you're also a fellow jiu-jitsu player. So yeah, I, that is, that is, <laughs> and I think this will tie into our message of mental health for men and personal growth and development. But uh, yeah, I started about 19 months ago. I recently just got my blue belt, maybe about three, four weeks ago. Great, congratulations. Um, that is yeah, thank you. Us. Did you know that? I don't know how realistic these statistics are. Apparently only 10% of people that start jiu-jitsu get to blue belt. And apparently one in a hundred people who start get to black belt. So basically... He gets less and less because, but mate, congratulations. I'm a, um, a purple belt and I know how hard getting to blue belt is. Well, congrats on purple belt. Yeah. But I'll be 42 next month. I don't have any children, but I'm a man who's experienced 41 years of life and the ups and downs of going through a marriage and a divorce. And then also just trying to figure out your own identity in, in this world. And I'm trying to also have a positive message through content creation that you can take your experiences in life. And I, I saw that you have a course on stress management, you have a book. So you're taking your experiences and you're turning that into something that can be helpful to other people. And so that's what I'm doing with my message. It's teaching people to say, Hey, you don't have to be super skilled as an editor or a photographer, or videographer, but you have experience in other areas. You have lived experience. And I think that's really important. And I think we forget that our experience, our relationships, our raising of children, our struggles, those are stories that can help other people who are going through similar situations. So thanks yeah. again for having me on the podcast. No, you're welcome. I basically, that I reached out to you. I watched a couple of your videos and I binged some of your content because it <laughs> really spoke to me for a number of reasons. We're of a similar age. I'll turn 48 next month. I think there is a demand and a want from lots of men who are 40 and there's got to be more to this. And actually a lot of people who like, I don't want the, the nine to five grind to be my thing. You know, it's a massive thing to do because it's just the, the cost of living to the idea of thinking, yeah, but how do I do that? How do I make that jump from doing something creative like YouTube or a podcast, which actually, it brings me joy. I never get bored. I never get like frustrated in the same way. I never get Sunday night blues about the idea of getting up and editing or it's exciting. And I think anything creative breathes life in back into your life, really. You've probably heard of, you've saw some videos online where people try to compare uh, life as a video game. And I, I had a video where I talked about the main missions of a, of a game. If you're playing a role-playing game, it's you have to work your nine to five. You have to provide for your family and your children. That's like the main mission, the main quest you have to do as a part of the game. But to really, to level up your character, if you use this analogy of the video game, you actually have to also do side quests. Those are the little side missions that you have to do that you get skill points and maybe you get cash these are helping you progress in the game of life. And so I would challenge anyone who wants to get out of the nine to five is think about what are your side missions? What are your side quests? Now that could be a couple hours each night working on YouTube videos or building your brand, learning a skill. There's so much on YouTube to learn how to become an editor, learn how to code. Maybe you want to become a coder or engineer, but you didn't go to the traditional right way of going through like university or college. The university now it's the creator economy, it's YouTube. And so that's what I would challenge anyone who's listening. It's, I have this nine to five. Maybe it's something I don't want to do for the next 20 years. Well, then what are your side missions? What are you dedicating those extra hours to at night to level up your life? Yeah, I agree with you. That's really why I want to side post anyone who watches my content to your content. Because I really think this is really interesting. This is a man in his 40s. I think being in your 40s, we're at a massive advantage. We've been around the block. We've had, we've experienced some life. And I think that gives you a drive that maybe you don't have 
in an urgency that you don't have in your 20s in the same way. I have to do this and I have to do this now. So there'll be lots of men out there who will be like, oh, I'd love to start a YouTube channel, but I just, where do I start? And I think the problem with YouTube is it can be very lonely. YouTube or podcast or any creation can be very lonely. I want to be able to signpost people to other people like, you need to listen to this guy. It'll really help. Even just a, even a perspective. So you don't feel like you're doing it alone. Yeah, I also made a video where I talked about you cannot be a lone wolf creator. You have to have a pact. Now, if you think of a wolf, if there's a, wolves are in packs. They, they hunt together. They survive together. They eat together. And you could think of a, a lone wolf who gets kicked out of the, the pack and they have to survive on their own. They probably don't survive very long. And I remember years ago when I was doing YouTube, making vlogs and gaming content, I didn't really have a direction, but I also didn't have a community of other creators. So it was easy for me to say, well, I'm not getting any views. It's, this is really hard. I'm just going to give up. But when you have a community of other creators, they, they can help provide that support. You can go to them and get the latest and research or information or strategy that people are using. I also think about like jujitsu. One of the reasons I joined jujitsu is because as we all know, the pandemic it did a lot of damage on people's mental health. People were isolated. They were alone. They were turning to other alternatives to deal with that loneliness. Maybe it was substances. There's data out there that can show like a decline in mental health and, and connection and community. And so, although I'm naturally an extrovert, I, that's how I am. I like, I love people. I found myself during the pandemic just gaming every day. I was teleworking from home, so I didn't need to leave my house. I could use Instacart or one of these services to bring my groceries to me. And then I could play my PlayStation all day because that's what life was. There was nothing really to do. Things were closed. And then after the pandemic, I did my annual health checkup and my doctor said, hey, you're in the pre-diabetic range. Your A1C levels are really high. So I'm 6'6", six, six, so I'm pretty tall. I was 265. This is the most I've ever weighed in my life. I've always been like a really skinny guy, like the 210, 215. And I got to 265 and I said, wow, something definitely needed to change. And I forced myself to do jujitsu because I knew that it would give me a community of other men and women that I can connect with. And it would help me have an alternative. Although video games aren't bad and I haven't played video games in a year, just cause I wanted to focus on YouTube and be really strategic. But I had to give myself, okay, if I'm going to pay 150 US dollars a month, whatever, to go to this yeah. gym, I have to actually have to use it. So community is really important for anyone listening. Yeah, if you're thinking of doing jiu-jitsu or doing content online, I think a community is so important. I agree with you. And I think there's, a, I think there's some massive parallels between something like trying to learn Brazilian jiu-jitsu and trying to succeed on YouTube. It is really hard. <laughs> yeah. Neither of us have chosen the, the, the road less traveled. I started jiu-jitsu in 2016. I think a lot of reasons for my mental health. I've struggled with depression and OCD for years. And I'll be honest, quite often, the only time I feel completely present and I'm not obsessing about some intrusive thought is when I'm rolling. And, I, and you'll get this. You, you, there's no space to really think about anything else when you're doing jujitsu and i think that's the beauty of it i, I love it because it's exercise and it's good for mental health but actually it's a community of men and it's such an honest sport it's probably the most honest sport i've done yeah i think there's definite parallels to wanting to succeed maybe get your purple brown and black belt and wanting to get monetized or make business out of youtube anyone who's made it will tell you this is crazy hard i think it's a difficult thing but i think it's totally doable if you can have the longevity and you can say, I'll give this 10 years, I think the danger people have is that you get seduced by the people that say, I got monetized in three months from shorts. And, and I'm like, there isn't a quick fix, not for something like this. You know, I think it is possible to make this a living, but you have to embrace the learning of it. You have to actually just say in the same way with jujitsu, don't get obsessed with the stripes and the belt. Obsessed with getting really good. So that when you get on the mat, you could be a white belt, but then people like that guy is slick, his technique is good. I think the thing with your content, people are like, I just watched a really amazingly entertaining video from someone who might have made it in his bedroom, but oh my goodness, I find that really helps me. Instead of just pumping out stuff, I go, yes, I think you've got to be consistent, but I think your stuff has to get better. It's the power of 1%. Every single video gets a little bit better. I think that's the key. Yeah, I think there's a lot of really good parallels between jujitsu and, and YouTube. I'm pretty tall. I'm, I'm six foot six, 230 pounds. 
And I get humbled so much in jujitsu by the smallest guys in there. And I'm way bigger than them, but it's because they have the experience. They have the time on the mat. They have the technical knowledge of different moves that I don't have. It's the same thing with YouTube. You're going to make a video and think this is the best video I've ever made. You're going to upload it and you're going to get no views, no traction, and you're going to get humbled a little bit. And it's funny because you might see someone else who's, it's their very first video and they get 50,000 views. You're like, what the heck? And they just filmed in their car. And then here you are with a nice camera and lighting and you have all this equipment you're putting all this work into. But uh, yeah, I think there's some good parallels between that. It's definitely longevity. It's time. It's learning, getting 1% better. That's what jujitsu is. Every time you go, you're going to get a little bit better. And that's what the game of content is. It's just finding, okay, maybe this time I'll improve just a little bit er better in this one area. Maybe it's the editing. Maybe it's the voiceover. Maybe it's the B-roll. Maybe it's my scripting. In the world of content creation, we should always be getting better. Whenever I talk to my head jiu-jitsu teacher, he's a two-time European champion. His teacher was Roger Gracie. The guy's a legend. And he just, I'd love to be able to tell you there's some magic way of doing it, but it's just more time on the map. It's just more time on the map. Getting humbled. It's like getting your ass kicked. I remember my, my first trial class, they paired me up with, I think this 15 year old girl, I thought, I don't know what, I'm going to hurt her. She smashed me. And I was like, I think after the second or third time of being all sort of nice and gentlemanly, I'm like, actually, I'm trying now. And she still smashed me. And I'm like, I think it either kills your ego and you can't handle it, or you go, oh my goodness, what is this magic that I have to mm-hmm. learn? And I think if you can try and adopt the same mindset with YouTube, going, why did that work? Why did I get? A higher a retention why did i get some comments what was it about that you have to sift through the ingredients yeah i'd say both brazilian jiu-jitsu and youtube go against what our society wants which is instant gratification i want to be monetized now i want to be a black belt now it's like yeah but it'd be hollow unless you've done it the, the way you have to which is over a long time this our are pushing you our nudge to, you know, go to your local gym and sign up. But <clears throat> excuse me, it's the same thing with YouTube, with analytics and data, the, the story is there, the information you need to improve is it's there in the data. It's also like when you go to class and learn a move, you are breaking down. How do I do that Kimura? Or how do I do that back take the, the steps? It's the technical stuff. And so I, I think a lot of people don't really look at their analytics because the analytics is telling you, this is when viewers drop off, stop watching your video. This is uh, where they're watching your videos from. So it's this, it's all around the data and the data informs you on where you can make those improvements. The data doesn't lie. And what I would say to anyone out there, actually, obviously my channel specifically for dads, actually anyone out there who is at that age where they're like, I want to, I just want to breathe some excitement back into my life. I think you get to your thirties and forties and you can feel like a bit groundhog day and something like learning YouTube. I started doing that and then that developed into podcasts. And I'm now my nine to five job is video editing and content. And I, it, I don't get that Sunday night feeling. I don't get it. It doesn't exist. I still have the stresses of having to pay my mortgage. I still have the stresses of making sure enough money coming in, but I don't have a horrible boss. I feel like I'm in control of my own destiny and that in itself breathes excitement into your life. And if like me, you're someone who struggles with their mental health. Do you know what? I think you're living on planet Earth today. I'd be surprised if you didn't have some concerns about your mental health because life is crazy at the moment. I think something like YouTube, which is ultimately free, is something I would suggest because, okay, you might spend 10 years and it might not end up the result making you a millionaire, but it will send you somewhere that you don't know. So things will happen. Even if you just have interesting conversations like we're having now, you, you don't know where it will go. You will get feedback and you will get humbled and you will, but you'll also get some success. That does happen. And it's exciting. I'm nearer to 50 than I am to 40, but I I get giddy with excitement about the idea of doing a thumbnail or I think that can only be a positive thing for everyone. Going into the unknown is it's something that people should do more of. And when I say going to the unknown, it's Maybe it's reading a, a book on self-development, venturing out into doing YouTube and learning about content creation. And it could help with mental health. It's having something to do. It's having a task that you do. We get so mundane with the nine to five and paying the bills, the mortgage, and we get into this kind of cycle. You hear people use the term like all oh, the matrix, but it's just this ongoing thing. And it's a way to really break that cycle is to have some other side missions. It's some side projects. You get off work, you log off, you get home, you have dinner. 
put the kids to sleep. And then maybe you have a couple of hours each night where you're reading, maybe you're learning how to do graphic design. Maybe you're learning how to be a better editor. That's exciting because you're working on a project that's outside of the main mission. It's something that you are developing. Maybe you're taking a boot camp to learn coding in the evenings or on the weekends when you have some free time. That I think is really good for your mental health because it sparks creativity, it gives you new ideas, and you can see progress. When I go back to jujitsu, as when I got my blue belt, it's like, yes, I can see there's progress. Although I was losing a lot and maybe I don't sub a lot of people, I did three competitions and I lost those three competitions. I'm progressing. You may not, I may not always see it, but my instructor has seen it, or the viewers, your audience, they're going to see those, or your wife or your partner. They're going to see your progress in coding and your excitement for photography or web design, whatever it is that you choose as your side mission. I think that could be really helpful for your mental health. Yeah, I think you're right. And just for what it's worth, I've done four comps and I've never won anything. <laughs> I've, I've got <laughs> smashed every time. But yeah. there's a group of us in jiu-jitsu. We, yeah, we play a game of poker once a month. And actually my head mm -hmm. coach was there. And we were talking about this and he said, just give yourself credit. He goes, there are a lot of black belts or brown belts or purple belts who don't have the courage to step on the map and compete. The, the number of people who do jujitsu is small. The number of people who compete in jujitsu is even smaller. And that is the most scared I've ever been when I'm about to yeah. step on the map. What am I doing? I don't need to do this. And I felt brutally humble, but I felt amazing. I felt like, oh my goodness, I'm so proud that I did something that I was terrified of. It's pushing yourself out of the comfort zone, isn't it? Something like YouTube or learning any new skill, you're upping a skill set and you don't know that might become a career. But also there are people out there like yourself and like myself who want to help other people if they can. You're not on your own. If, if I can comment on someone's video, I always make an effort. If I see something I like, I'll always actually, instead of just giving someone a thumbs up like, I actually say, I really enjoyed that. And this is why I enjoyed that. Because actually never underestimate how massive that is. To, someone to get a comment they're not doing this just for reciprocation. They're doing this because they're actually, something I said, something I created really resonated with them really. And that's powerful. I was talking to some of my friends in this creator group and we said that being a creator is very lonely because you are scripting out your videos, you're recording your videos, you're doing all the back end stuff to be a content creator. And you never know how your message is gonna resonate with the viewer behind a screen. And so if you can get an, an authentic, honest, comment from someone that says, Hey, this video resonated with me. That's the win. That's the stripe on the belt. That's a little uh, progress on that side mission. You can say, okay, great. I didn't get 10,000 views on this video, but I got a couple of comments from people who said this video was insightful. It resonated with me. Then, you know, you're on the right track. Like, all right, wait, there's something there. This message of yeah. content creation or mental health improvement, things like that. It's you're on the right track. You just got to dive a little bit deeper into it. It's the reason I contacted you. I probably contact one or two people a month from videos I watch quite often I never get anything back and that's fair enough you know I get that you have to put your message out in the world I, I, but just with the faith that it will come back someone will see it and people do see your stuff the, the, the sad thing is they probably watch your thing go oh, I really enjoy that they need to say it because actually saying it makes a massive difference people just get on with their lives but I think it's an exciting time to be alive because a lot of people who might think, well, I'd love to do what you're doing, but I'm too old to start. So I'm like, no, I think turn it the other way around. I think what the world is lacking is authenticity. I think we are living in a loneliness epidemic. If someone can watch a 10 minute video and go, I really felt like that guy was speaking to me. He said some things, he's my age, he's in my situation. I feel like I actually had a conversation with somebody. That's so powerful. And that certainly looking at trends on YouTube, that's the way it's going. There are a number of creators who are literally like, it's not flash. It's not, it's just very honest. It's, that to me shows that, that people need this. People are like, I don't watch television anymore. I need to actually feel like I'm engaging with, with someone. If you are someone who's uh, on YouTube and consume a lot of, I consume a lot of uh, YouTube. I don't like really watch a lot of Netflix or shows unless my, my girlfriend's here, or I'm visiting her and she wants to show me one of her movies or shows, but, um, you can even, there's a conversation going around that the Mr. Beast retention editing dying off a little. Uh, and I think that's probably partly due to also like short form content, those really quick like edits and dopamine hits. And people, I know personally, I enjoy long form content. I like podcasts. I like really deep, like authentic conversations. And you can see that's the trend that's going now with content creation. It's 
more authentic voices, more unscripted, raw kind of content, a lot of podcasts and things like that. So the, the time of being a content creator is great. And like I mentioned at the beginning, think about your lived experience. Think about what you could share with someone else, the struggles you've been through, the successes that you've had. You see a lot of people online teaching how to create videos or how to start a business, how to invest, how to save money. Those are all really great skills and experiences that people have that you can teach. That's really articulate, really well said. I think there'll, there'll be thousands of that men in their forties who do jujitsu and that's your, and that's your avatar. Actually, you don't want in some ways going viral can be the worst thing because you don't want 10,000 of the wrong people. You need a thousand of the right people. It's amazing how small the numbers are. You actually need for it to become your business. You need a few hundred people who just say, I really like what this guy's doing. I'm going to support him by Patreon. I'm going to buy his book because I believe in what he's doing. Cause he's clearly in this for the long haul. He's really authentic. That's the beauty of it. I think people are starting to come around to the idea that actually spending some time to invest in a community and something like long form of podcasting is where you can really build a relationship with someone. You can't get that from a five second short. I've never ever clicked on and investigated from a short. Whereas a, a video like yours, I, I've gone down the rabbit hole. I want to find out a bit more about this guy because I've listened to him for 10 minutes. That I think is where it's going. YouTube have been very vocal about the fact they're promoting podcasts. They're the second biggest search engine. They will naturally get a lot of podcasters on here. And I think podcasts will ultimately replace television. I just think it will. Because as you said, you can learn anything you want on YouTube. I think in the next decade, that would be my tip for anyone who wanted to breathe excitement into their life. And who knows, maybe even if it meant that you could retire 10 years early and the last 10 years you were running on your own creative thing how awesome would that be that just that would be great yeah you hit some so many good points i want to i don't want to lose a train of thought but going back to authenticity so it's funny because i was looking at your free stress management of course and you have an intro kind of video and it's so authentic because it's like you the dog the kids you doing jiu-jitsu warm-ups in the kitchen that's the authentic connection that's what people want and if you look at other successful creators everything is super scripted now obviously scripting is part of the process and when you reached out to me to do the podcast that is also one of those wins it's like well if someone wants to interview me and do a podcast so that that's another stripe on the belt that's another like yeah, victory yeah. like cool that it's resonating with, with someone out there i'm on the right track and then going back to the like 1000 true fans or your audience if even on my channel, now, I unlisted some of my older videos that I made this last year because I just didn't think they aligned with my message. But I think we're uh, always trying to find out what is our message and get more clarity. And I think that's the most challenging thing about content. It's clarity because I was making content on self-development, which I still will do. But then I had a couple of videos on CapCut and Canva. It's all part of content creation, but I want to focus in on clarity and also helping people who are maybe a little bit further and want to actually be serious about content creation. Because you get a mix of people, but going back to the authenticity, I just was like, James has, you know, he's doing more ups in the kitchen and showing the kids and the dog. Like some people will filter that stuff out because they want to protect the brand of their image, but it's not, oh, that's who I am. This is authentically me. And well, I appreciate you coming to that. That's really kind. But I think likewise, watching your video, I, I actually felt like you were just being honest. And actually, I think that's what human beings are craving. They are craving unfiltered honesty because I think there's some people who just don't have that interaction in life. And I think something like a podcast, you can have a conversation and ultimately it's just, it's two men having a conversation. But that's mm -hmm. really interesting. That's really interesting. If those men are basically men that you have might be in, in, in the same class of schools, the advice I would give is people because I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I said, don't worry about it. It will evolve it up before your eyes. Just start, just make a shitty video and then, and see what happens. Again, do jujitsu because you get very good at learning how to be crap at stuff. And you get okay with being not very good. I've been not very good at jujitsu for eight years and I love it. I absolutely love it. I, I submit a very small number of people, <laughs> but I don't care. I absolutely love it. I've made some amazing friends and I feel like I'm a much happier man because of doing that. It, it gives you the courage to take more chances and it might help you go, let's just give it a go. Let's make some awful videos and see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. Going back to the work in the nine to five, I'll be 42. So I technically have to work another almost 20 years. 
But what if I was to dedicate just the next three to five years to content and really trying to understand and learn because the creator economy, and I know that's probably a term that someone listening may not understand what the creator economy is, but how you product, uh, how do you monetize your skills? So if you are a writer, if you are a videographer, if you know how to start a business online, you are teaching other people that in the creator economy, think about it. We have access to AI. We have access to tools. We have access to uh, systems that allow us to pretty much make, uh, make a business online that we couldn't do maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago. We have so much resources and information now. And so you think about the way of obviously influencers, kind of one of those, those terms that people are getting away from and creators, the new term that people use, but brands are willing to pay for access to your audience. That's really big. If you think of someone as, as big as Mr. Beast, I think I heard someone mention on a podcast that ads, they can't even pay him enough money because he's so big. So what he does is he sells his own products. He sells his chocolate and he, he does his beast burgers and things like that because he's grown so big. Yeah. I think again, just content creation, think about that. If you just put three to five years, maybe you don't get, maybe you don't reach hundred thousand or you don't hit 500,000 subscribers, but you learn some skills and maybe that becomes a new business that you start. Maybe you have a, a freelancing service business because you were able to build skills over the last three to five years. As a way of showing more support to parents who may be struggling with the stress of the summer holidays during the month of August, I'll be giving away the stress management for parent course that I normally sell online completely free. On top of that, if following the stress management course, you really enjoyed it, but would like some one-to-one -one support about how to make lasting improvements in your stress management, you can book in with me to have a one-to-one -one Zoom call. We can agree an action plan of how to make that happen. That said, like the video course, this is only free for the month of August. So to make sure you don't miss out, just go to my website, www.dadmindmatters.com and subscribe. Worst case scenario, if I start annoying you after a month, you can always unsubscribe. That's what I did. All right, wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care.